I'm Alan Robarge, a psychotherapist and a relationship coach. Welcome to Improve Your Relationships, where I like to talk about attachment injuries and healing attachment trauma. And on this video, let's talk about how to stop trying to get your ex back. And this video is very much in response to a series of other videos or blog posts uh, by a whole range of people that love to talk about get your ex back. And so this video is the opposite to say, can we please stop trying to get our ex back? Now, so I realized the fact that I just said that many people just turned off the video and are not going, going to, to watch this. Um, what I am trying to share here is that if you have some attachment injuries that show up as attachment trauma, you are looping in an anxiety and attachment distress that keeps you fixated on believing that you need the other person. Even when you know this person is not the right person for you, even when you know the relationship stinks, even when you know the relationship is hurtful to you, even though you've been on again, off again, on again for two years, five years, seven years, 12 years, and that there's tension, chronic tension, chronic struggle. This relationship is not working, but you don't know how to end. And sometimes you, you might have complete clarity and put forth the effort to create an ending. And in a very short period of time, your panic, your fear, your anxiety, uh, your attachment distress, the, the fear of abandonment, the, the longing, creeps in, the loneliness creeps in, the very frenetic, charged, hot, energetic, really pulsing through your nervous system fear. This is, I need this person, I need this person. And that is when there is attachment trauma, the, our, our wires in our brain are disconnected in some way, or they're, it's a kind of faulty wiring where we're just looping around still needing someone who's not good for us needing a relationship that is not good for us. And we are so frightened by the prospect of being out of this relationship. We're so frightened of not having attachment needs met. And it, it activates, you know, perhaps a history of abandonment, a history of rejection, a history of betrayal, a history of not belonging, a history of being ignored. And the prospect of moving into that deep hurt and the grief of that history is so overwhelming that the brain just naturally clicks on and says, okay, go back, go back, go back, go back to so-and-so, go back to the partner, go back to him, go back to her, whoever it is. I need him, I need him, I need her, I need her. And so this is how we get this on again, off again behavior, the cold, you know, the pushing away, come back, the pushing away. It's like, I can't be with my loneliness. I can't be with the grief of the reality of my history of relationships not working out and that I have unresolved attachment injuries from my family. And we are the brain, the mind, the brain just naturally goes to the place. I need relief. And I just think I need to immediately get back together with the ex partner. I really need to get, you hear the word, I need to get him or her. I need to, I need to uh, uh, create this enticing, uh, this enticing presentation uh, to pull the other person back into me. And then there's this whole amount of information from the internet, from, you know, other type of uh, authority figures who get on board fueling your fear. And just keep in mind, you have to realize that they know they're doing this, that they're, they're selling a product. They're selling, I mean, this is marketing. And it's saying, well, you know, here's a beautiful, amazing audience of people who have attachment trauma and they're going, they want to hear the message. Yes, get your ex back. If you do this, if you do this and you do this, you can make him fall back in love with you. You can make him want to call you. If you play this game and play this game and this game, you're going to solicit the behaviors and the response that you want back. And the whole idea is so that 
you can get the relationship that you want. I want to point out to you, and please forgive me as a how I say this, I want to say it with some sensitivity, not as a judgment of immaturity, but to say we are coming from an immature place. This is immature thinking. If you really think the way that you create healthy relationship is to mastermind some plan of manipulation to get the ex-partner to fall in love with you. And there's even trainings and, and ideas, approaches that say, well, what we need to do is we gotta produce more oxytocin. We gotta produce the cuddle hormone. We gotta produce other, other ways uh, to, to link hormonal uh, exchange. Uh, and, and, and I'm gonna show you this five steps, these five steps uh, to, to essentially put your partner under a spell uh, if you actually believe this, this is immature thinking. And I'm sorry to say it like this. I, I can say it so directly to you because I have done this many times. My attachment distress, my, my attachment trauma becomes so activated where I'm essentially mindless. And it, it's this incessant need to be reunited with the partner that I don't even really want to be in relationship with. But there's this other part of how my brain works that I completely convince myself that, yes, I want to be with this person. And so then I might get on board with this kind of scheming or figuring out ways to manipulate the situation uh, to try to get in relationship with the other person again. And I'm pointing out that if you are pursuing these kind of approaches, chances are it means that you're very much in your, your attachment trauma is activated and we need to shift focus from employing this, you know, great, uh, this great, um, protocol for how to get your ex to fall back in love with you and maybe to look at, you know, how to get more honest with the realities of your attachment trauma because I can pretty much guarantee that if you get your ex back, it, it doesn't mean that either of you have the actual skills or the healthy outlook on how to sustain healthy relationship because you wouldn't have broken up in the first place. And we like to lie to ourselves. We like to be dishonest with ourselves about reality because the alternative is to drop down into, if we're not lying to ourselves about reality, we're dropping down into the grief of realizing, wow, this, we, this is not working. We are not getting what we want. And the loss of this relationship and the loss of a lifetime of connections and not working out for us, emotional connections not working out for us is just so crushingly overwhelming. We much rather, we can't manage the intensity of how, how, how crushing that grief is. So we get on board scheming with these ideas of like, well, let's get, let's get him. Let's, let's get the X, uh, to, to really fall back in love with you. Let's get her to really fall back in love. And usually it's about creating this whole, this whole outlook instead of, it's like misplaced agency. It's a kind, it's also like confused sense of power. It sort of assumes we have this degree of power that we don't really have to like force someone to fall in love with us. And this thinking, this idea is, you know, so old. It's, it, it, it comes through the ages with this idea of a love potion. The idea is like, if only I had a love potion, you know, I could put a couple drops of the love potion you know, into this person's drink or into the food and they'll fall in love with me, you know, and as we know today, that's called drugging someone and taking advantage of someone. So that's, that's really not the route that we're going. So you are invited if that you actually find yourself entering a chapter of this frenetic, manipulative, scheming kind of outlook of how you need to figure out 
how to be most attractive, to entice your partner to come back to you and to get him or her to fall in love with you, chances are you're really ignoring the bigger picture of what's going on and you're creating another chapter of diversion, which really means you're signing up for another chapter of disappointment and suffering. Um, it's not going to work out. If you don't heal your attachment trauma and look at what is healthy relating, trying to, you know, manipulate someone into loving you or to hook someone back into a relationship that never was uh, uh, sustainable to begin with, um, you're, you're just, you're just inevitably prolonging, you know, more suffering. I hope that this video is helpful. If you like it, uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also a heads up, I have a checklist of a uh, healthy relating checklist. If this interests you, uh, go ahead and go to my website, alanrobards.com forward slash checklist, and you can sign up and I will email that to you. Um, and then lastly, pay attention, more videos on the way to come. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.